my God! It's my mom that's on fire! Oh my God! Oh my God! My mom's on fire! Oh God! A frantic 911 call as a daughter searches for her mother inside a smoke-filled house. <laughs> for Susan Hernandez, her family was everything. She raised seven children. We were her life. We were her world. My mom was a beautiful person and a wonderful mother, a wonderful grandmother. It's been six months since the love of her life, her husband of 59 years, Carlos, died. Now to keep her company in her Pueblo, Colorado home is her dog, Baby, and Vanessa, one of her daughters who lives right across the street. Katrina, who lives about 45 minutes away, talks to her mom daily. Every morning, the first thing I would say is, Mom, how did you sleep? Katrina says her mom hadn't been sleeping well. She'd been stressed out about the new roof she'd hired her grandson, Anthony, to put on. In any case, the devout Catholic had a tried and true way for dealing with her worries. Pray, that's what my mother did. Whenever anything went wrong in her life, she would turn to God and pray. But on this one Wednesday in late July, 77-year-old Susan Hernandez would need so much more than prayers. That Wednesday morning, uh, first thing I did was called mom a little bit after seven in the morning. Her mom didn't pick up, so Katrina left a voicemail. Told her I'd talk to her later, told her to have a good day. Got up, brushed my teeth, and for some reason I thought I'm gonna call mom again. It was around 7.15, 7.17, I called mom again. Still, no answer. Katrina tries her again later, nothing. I had a horrible gut feeling going through my stomach. I uh, closed up my house and uh, uh, drove down to Pueblo. When Katrina arrives at her mom's house, she's greeted not by her, but by clouds of smoke. And sees where the smoke is coming from, the basement. Katrina immediately makes this gut-wrenching call to 911. Is the can help you? Yes, there's a fire at my mother's house. What's burning? The house is full of smoke. I cannot find my mother. Do you see any flames? What? Yes, there's flames in the basement. And her music's on. The door, the door, our front door is broke. Like somebody broke in. I, I, she might be in the basement. I don't know, but the house is full of smoke. Please send somebody. They're coming right now. Okay. Mom! But I'm in the basement now. I want you to get out of the house. Okay, mother! Mom! Mom! Okay, I'm going now. Katrina goes outside, but the intense need to find her mom pulls her back in. What she's about to see is beyond comprehension. I don't want you to go in there. I'm here. I'm, I'm in here. I cannot leave. No, I, I, I'll be, I don't want you I'll to be leave. okay. I'll be okay. Mom! Mother! So I, can they get, check the basement as soon as they get you? So I, I'm afraid she's down there. Mother! Mom! 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 Oh my God! It's my mom that's on fire! Oh my God! Oh my God! My mom's on fire! Oh God! Police and fire crews already on their way to what they think is a structure fire hear this over the radio. It's possible burglary as well. She found her mother in the basement on fire. I know uh, Purvis is acting sergeant. Detective Raymond Purvis, who is assigned to the case, comes from a storied law enforcement family. He's a relative of famed FBI agent Melvin Purvis, considered to be the man who got gangster John Dillinger. As Detective Purvis approaches the house, he immediately notices signs of forced entry. The door jam was broken and splintered. It appeared that someone had kicked open the door. Inside, things seemed to be untouched. Nothing was out of order. Miss Hernandez kept that house immaculate. Then he makes his way to the basement. So you go down into the basement, and you had uh, Mrs. Hernandez. Um, she had been set on fire. But that wasn't all. Investigators would soon learn. Obvious problem. Now we look back on it. Susan Hernandez had been bludgeoned. She had uh, a large um, hole to the back of her head. She had been struck multiple times. And we knew that because of the cast off uh, and the blood splatter at the scene. 
We definitely knew it was a homicide. There was not a question about that. I didn't want it to be real. I didn't want it to be real. I didn't want it to be true. Not even a bad nightmare, because a nightmare you can wake up, wake up, and it didn't happen. But this happened. I'm sorry. Katrina's sister Brenda was at work when she got the news. When she arrives, I saw all of the crime scene tape and I knew she was murdered at that point. More distraught family members show up to the horrific scene. Are you family? Yeah. Yes, we're going to tape off some of this area here. There, along with Brenda and Katrina, is their sister Vanessa, who lives across the street. Her sons, Devin and Anthony, and their cousin, Sebastian. Anthony walks up to me and he says, I'm so sorry, Auntie Brenda. And we hugged and I was crying and I said, who would do this to your grandma? Who would murder your grandma like this, Anthony? Who would do this? And he goes, I don't know, I don't know. While cops wearing body cams canvass the neighborhood, family members are escorted to the station for routine questioning. Were they about to get their first break in the case? Did you see anything out of the ordinary and cars Whoa. coming and going? Or? I did see a car this morning, man. There's a blue car that was parked right, right, like off the road a little bit. Coming up. You want to sit down and talk to me in the car? No, he'll kill me too. And later, a cocky declaration. He says, um, you don't have anything on me. If you had anything on me, you'd arrested me by now. 